morning and welcome to Starfire Sports Stadium in beautiful downtown Seattle, Washington. I'm Dan Power, joined by Katie Worst. And Katie, 16 women teams, 16 men teams. This is the penultimate of the sevens club season right here today. How excited are you for this tournament? Just thrilled to be here, Dan. I mean, exceptional talent's going to be on display all day long. We've got a day that's heightened by the Women's Rugby World Cup as well. We have sevens action and 15s, everything we could look for if you're a rugby fan. Definitely, that's right too. The women are about to kick off in about an hour over in front. So if you've got your TV tuned into Universal Sports, make sure you watch that. Laptops and iPads, stay right here with us today. We've got a day full of action for you coming your way. We're going to start off with two games from the women's. First up, though, we have the Berkeley All Blues versus the Blue Bonnets, a uh, merger team out of Oklahoma and Texas. Tell us a little bit more about that program. Sure, the Blue Bonnets, a number of programs, got some great talent that's on display from the collegiate ranks there, Texas Tech University, Texas A&M number of different exciting players that are relatively unknown, so a great chance to see what we have from the Red River area. And when you say the name Berkeley All Blues in women's rugby in the U.S., they need no introduction. What a powerhouse they are in both 15s and 7s. Missing some players with World Cup duty, which is just a sign of what kind of program that is, but they also have some very classy players in that roster. Tell us a little bit about them. Sure, we're definitely going to be looking for some great display of skills from Captain Sarah Davis as well as Phoebe Boone, 15s uh, pool player as well. A um, couple of uh, Emily Acevedo as well, a player that's an Olympian bobsledder, but taking a chance here at rugby, trying to cross over to that code. Oh, I hate to throw the Cool Runnings reference out there, but she is looking for some Cool Runnings today. Acevedo, she's a speedster out there, so watch her go. We'll be right back in a moment with the first game. We've got the Blue Bonnets versus All Blues coming up. Don't go away. All right, kickoff coming here on the left of your screen. We see the All Blues kicking off. Nice deep kick goes back to the 22, bounces so it's well fielded by the Blue Bonnets. Looking to attack early, but they're met well in defense. Berkeley, they're a classy program. They're not going to muck around here today. You'd have to think they're heavy favorites against the Blue Bonnets early. But they'll attack. Nice little grubber takes her up to halfway. It's well fielded though. She's close to the sideline. Can she stay in? Fantastic tackle. Now we'll see that powerful All Blues attack as they move the ball out to the right. They've defended well, the Blue Bonnets, though. They've numbered up. They've got woman on woman here, and that's a nice low tackle. Beautiful little offload back on the inside, though. Looks like Phoebe Boone. She's been a little bit of a rough form lately, Boone, missing out in that World Cup spot. She's probably got something to prove here today. Ball comes across. Nice little individual movement there. Katie, that's someone you're quite familiar with as she dots over into the corner. That's uh, Bulo Matatanga, actually, just make, making a great work to just take a little bit of a sidestep, just a little show and go. Ended up... Dotting down early for Berkeley All Blues. Yeah, and that's the beauty of Matatonga's athleticism there. You saw it just hold up midfield, stop that defender, and then accelerates beautifully to her left and gets around the outside. And as we expected, the All Blues are uh, heavy favorites here. They'll dot down first. Probably about a minute gone in the action. Those of you joining in, not too familiar with the game, seven aside as opposed to 15, halves of seven minutes. So it's action, action, and then once you're done with that, we'll throw in a little bit more action for you. That's the beauty of seven rugby. Now with its introduction to the Olympics 2016, Katie, we look to Rio and very exciting times for seven rugby. Absolutely, Dan. We're going to see a number of these players here showcased today that have the shot for 2016. You know that's in the front of their minds, saying that this is their chance to be seen by the coaches and selectors and really also just working together with their team. As we saw with Berkeley all the way getting up early, early on the board. Certainly did. That's a better take there. Well fielded by the Blue Bonnets. They're well met though. That looks like Lloyd with the ball. She's about 20 out. She dishes it off nicely though and they start driving it forward just outside the 22. They move it out to the right. Blue Bonnet still with the ball. That was a nice little slip put out there from Campbell. She looks for runners. Comes across beautifully. Murrell, she feeds it out to the winger. Playing an advantage here for a forward pass. It looks like referee. Doesn't matter. The All Blues have turned it over. Committing some numbers to the ruck. About 25, 30 out from the line. We'll bring it back. It's got on there for a little knock on or it looks like a forward pass maybe. So just a bit, little bit of probably some nerves related to some early handling errors here by the Blue Bonnets. Berkeley just so quick to recover as they do in the 15-a-side game. Really, you, you can't take a chance to make any types of mistakes here with this season program. That's right. We get a look at the first scrum. A couple of players missing from the usual scrum. Doesn't mean there's any lack of intensity, though. You see the All Blues push Bonnets off the ball beautifully. It's a little sloppy. Referee could blow the whistle and bring it up. He's going to let the girls play. Still with Berkeley as they drive it into the 22 now. Digging around for the ball. That looks like where, where when she moves it across. There's 
trouble. Shaping the kick, steps back inside. Nice little work there from Sarah Davis. She's met though, about 20 metres out from the line. Goes in, there's Matatonga again, the try scorer. She moves it out to her left. Comes down now to the seven. No, that's Matatonga. No, that's Azevedo, I'm sorry, Azevedo. The bobsledder, you talked about her in the lead up. How fast is she, Katie? Well, um, certainly if she is looking to be a bobsledder involved, there's a lot of different track athletes that have crossed over to that sport. And just USA Rugby actually looking for a number of crossover athletes that basically our game provides any opportunity to showcase the different skill sets in different games. And it's not just rugby, do it. We just saw the Winter Olympics last year with Lola Jones uh, doing the bobsled. So there definitely is that interest there. And the Olympics, such a big carrot for some of these athletes too. Good college athletes who, who kind of get a little lost after school finishes. This is definitely an avenue to keep training and, and using that athletic prowess. You get back to the action, the All Blues. There's some opportunities here as they move the ball out to the right. That's with Baccarella. She's well met though. Again, good aggressive rucking from the Blue Bonnets. Playing advantage, though. The referee comes back right in front of the post for a penalty. Will they go quick? They do. It's a nice little tap from Davis. She backs herself. She's well met, though. Dragged out about five metres out from the line now. Tenacious defence early on by the Blue Bonnets. Just trying to do what they can to manage the damage. Dombrowski, she goes down. Finds Phoebe Boone. Can Phoebe Boone dot over? She certainly can, Phoebe Boone. She's had a very solid start to the game, Boone. You'd expect that from her. Probably a little disappointed about not making that World Cup squad. She was a regular for the USA and now here doing her thing for the Berkeley All Blues as they increase their lead to 10 points to zero here. A great work early on from Phoebe. Just finding the space that she needed. Berkeley had a great overload, was able to push the ball wide and made sure that they made true on their first attempt here. Nice strike of the ball. It won't come back though. Stays out to the right of the post. Conversion unsuccessful. Leaves the score at 10 points to zero. We're getting close to the end of the first half. Berkeley, as you would expect, and no disrespect to the Blue Bonnets, they are a fantastic squad to make this final 16 teams here. But the All Blues perennial powerhouses, I believe the reigning club seven champions from last year, and they're looking to go back to back here today. Yep, staying true to form early on, really just strength team program that is just heralded in women's rugby in the U.S. Well, they certainly are. Now let's see what these Blue Bonnets can do. That's not the start they were looking for. A little knock on there coming out of their own end. They haven't handled getting out of their own half very well early in the piece, Katie. They've struggled. They've moved the ball well side to side, but they're just lacking a little penetration now on attack. Yep, just a little bit of an early handling error there by Jen Swinton. Just coming up, couldn't quite find exactly the support she was looking for. So we'll see how they fare here in the scrum. First scrum, we saw Berkeley, a very powerful scrum, drove the Blue Bonnets back off the ball. They're making some substitutions now. We'll get a number two shortly as they make the first change here in the first half. And they're going to need to do something. We've seen Berkeley twice down their end getting two tries to start this game. Ten points isn't a lot in sevens, as you know. The comeback is, is literally just minutes away, if possible. But let's get back to the action now. Berkeley moves across the floor. Davis, she's looked dangerous with the ball. Davis, she straightens up. Matty Tonga, beautiful left foot step. She's right to it. It's a foot race to the corner. Matty Tonga, she gets her second try of the day in the first half. Beautiful stuff there from All Blues. I love Sarah Davis drifting across field, though. And then Matty Tonga just straightens that ball up beautifully. What about that one? Katie Worst. Sure, just a fantastic running line that Matty Tonga saw that gap. Davis doing a great job to draw on the defense, creating an opportunity for her teammate. Great score, good work. Well worked by the Berkeley All Blues. Yeah, and again, they just look like a team that's played a lot of sevens together. They've got a good little core group there. Some really good young athletes in Azevedo. And conversion unsuccessful leaves a score at 15 points to zero. Berkeley over the Blue Bonnets. And like we were saying, they just look like a really solid squad. And I don't think they're going to get much of a test until they get into the final stages tomorrow. What are your thoughts on that? Certainly. I think their fitness has just really been key so far early on in the game. Fantastic. You can see the differential in just the handling abilities as well. Those are things, as this tournament wears on, they're going to absolutely be keys to Berkeley's success. Yeah, that one not going at 10 metres there. Azevedo jumps up, shows their athleticism, but unfortunately, oh, they're going to come. They're actually going to bring it back to the middle. Getting a little excited there. That's the, uh, the 16 for the Blue Bonnets. Don't have a name on that. We'll, give, we'll just... That's, We'll just keep calling the 16. Everyone at home knows that she's wearing the 16. Nice little set piece there. Ball goes down, though. They look like they could have been an opportunity. Now it comes down to Berkeley. They come across field with speed. Here's Azevedo. Let's see her open those big wings of her. She goes straight through Azevedo. What's she going to do one-on-one -on -one with the fullback? She'll go right past her. 
Oh, cool runnings indeed from the former bobsledder. She dots it down just 10 metres to the right of the post and Berkeley extend that lead to 20 points to zero. And Katie, you talked about the, the benefit of crossover athletes. We saw it there. What a clean set of heels she has. Just a, just a great momentum, good go forward run. You can see the pace that Azevedo has. Uh, just another tool in the two box there for the Berkeley All Blues. And she's very, very new to rugby. I mean, we look at the profile and she has been playing only a matter of months, I believe. Uh, I think April this year she came into the sport and one of the big things, a little nuances, especially one-on-one, -on -one, is learning how to position the defender to beat it. She did a great job there. Of course, she's an outstanding athlete. But she did a great job positioning the sweeper and then using her speed to get on the outside there. And she could be an interesting one. You know, we've got Rick Suggett here this weekend, the sevens coach. I'm sure he'll be very, very interested in, in players like uh, Emily Azevedo. Sure, just a great display of sort of field vision and the knowledge, especially a player that's just early on in the game, being able to read the situation and back herself and go forward, put some more points on the board. Yeah, 20 points to zero at half time of the first game here in the women's brackets. If you're just joining us, we have your team on screen there, the All Blues from Berkeley. Uh, they are putting a number over the emerger side of the Blue Bonnets, which involve players from Texas and Oklahoma, which is unheard of in college sports. Big rivals, the Red River rivals there, Texas and Oklahoma, but they're getting together here today for the Rugby Sevens. And they are down 20 points to zero. And they're going to take, uh, it's going to take something pretty special for them to come back from this, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm, certainly. You could see the differential in the challenge around Texas and Oklahoma players being able to assemble a, a number of times. So just that cohesion we've seen early on, just a couple of different handling errors and timing, which is an issue. Berkeley All Blues, they regularly train together on a regular basis. Have new coaching staff coming in. Um, whereas the Blue Bonnets have experienced coaching staff in Donna Thomas, actually works with the Arkansas men's program. So really kind of bringing in those areas and how they can make sure that they're dealing with the issue of having that distance between the players. But they've done well to combat that by making it here to the National Championship Series. Oh, brilliant observations from Katie Worst there. 100%, it's all about communication and chemistry with these teams. The thing with the, the All Blues, just three players returned from their championship team last year. The World Cup, obviously, why it's great for those players over there. It hurts the Sevens programs here, missing, I believe, four or five players, which is a great representation from club and definitely an indication of how strong Berkeley are as a rugby club but just three players out there and they're probably lucky to have Phoebe Boone too I mean like I said she was a regular in the setup there and uh, form doesn't find her over in France for the World Cup but uh, they could have been down to just two players returning it's an indication of just how well their systems are in place at Berkeley that players can step up and fill those gaps so easily yes Berkeley is missing talent like Jossie Sang uh, Natalie Marquino, Katie Augustin, all these players about to represent here against the Black Ferns coming up. Great, big, important match here for women's rugby in the U.S. Oh, big Jossie fan, Sank fan. How about her playing against the Irish? She was so busy with those little boots like a good little scrum half should be. As we get restarted here, the Blue Bonnets kick, drifts over the sideline, bounces though, so we'll go for a line out. As Avedo ball in hand, she'll go quickly. Referee, obviously line out was set there, so she can't go for the quick throw. Just a little bit of a hesitation from uh, Emily there, hey holding up on the throw. And guys, no quick you can see the communication there, no from quick. the players there, just trying to explain to her. Like we said, she started playing in April, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that she's going to have to learn on the fly. And she's definitely uh, got some good teammates down there helping her out too. I mean, referee Nick Raconos early on right away, setting the standard for the refereeing throughout the weekend. I probably shouldn't say this, but Nick, Nick is a good referee. There's I'm not, sure he'll appreciate that, There's Dan. not too many of them, but I'll give you credit where credit's due, Mr. Ricona. You do a good job. Ball goes in now. Berkeley against the head, though. They bring it across the field. They look to attack, even from their own end. They're such a potent outfit. Comes down to the two-try scorer, Matitonga there. The nice looping run, though. Beautiful stuff there from Werwin. As she is bundled over the sideline, though, can't keep the ball in. And the Blue Bonnets will have the throw just 40 metres outside their own line. Let's see here what they can do. They haven't had much ball when they've had it. Like you said, they've been very stagnant, very stop-start with their attack, looking like a team that lacks cohesion. Uh, what are you expecting to see from them here? Just a little bit of timing, I think, has been the issue. Here we go. That timing was a little nicer on the line as they finally get some ball and attack. Little kick forward. It's a foot race now. Berkeley, though, have four players going back. It looks like it's well covered. Referee playing advantage. Nick Ricono bring them back. Looks like uh, maybe a little push in the back or something. Lady gave a, an interesting uh, interesting hand signal. There it is a penalty, so it could have been. There it is, a little push in the back. 
not showing off uh, his new dance moves. Mr. Ricono there is just indicating one of the Berkeley players interfered with one of the Blue Bonnet players potentially at the breakdown. And they will bring it back for a penalty. And probably a welcome penalty too as they kicked away possession there. Let's see what they do here with a quick tap. They bring it down. And they're right on midfield. They've got numbers out to the right and they move the ball that way. Ball in two hands, doing well. Berkeley have defended so well. Look how they've come across field and go in for the kill there. Two players come in, secure the ball, and then we see it again, Katie, that miscommunication, that lack of cohesion. The ball goes over the sideline, and Berkeley just showing their class here. Sure, Berkeley just, just demonstrating the patience that they have in defense to drift together. Make sure to just keep your assignment. They've done well to push them to the sideline. Here we go, Jessica Turner. We get a good look at her throw there right down the middle. Goes back to her. She passes it out now. Nice little ball there from Werwin in the 10. The nice loop. They go out to the winger. That's where their speed is. Matty Tonga. Can she go through? She's straight through Matty Tonga. One to beat. What's she do? She shapes the fullback up. She goes right around her. Oh, Park car stuff. She's come again at her though. Drags her down. Beautiful stuff from the Blue Bonnets to scramble there. Still with the All Blues. Just meters out from the line. A burrowing run. That looks like it could be Phoebe Boone again. We'll get a number when they get up. But a heads up play there. And the All Blues right under the post. 25 points to zero. But the player who is grabbing the headlines thus far is Mati Tonga. She is an absolute superstar. Just exceptional pace coming through. There's a very slight gap that she was able to exploit. Just not much the Blue Bonnets can do. I mean, you really can't teach speed. 100%, and she's got great footwork too. She's got that little shuffle that you see her do. It indicate uh, her name, obviously indicating some Polynesian heritage there, and she's got those beautiful feet that the Polynesian players are famous for. And she has that little shuffle as she gets to the defense, and then she just accelerates and she's gone. And at the moment, these Blue Bonnet players just have no answer for it. Certainly. Berkeley, you can tell that they're really making sure that they're utilized that attacking weapon and something that the Blue Bonnets just don't have an answer for at this moment. No, definitely. They're both solid sides getting here to the finals. Uh, obviously, you need to be a good side to get this far into the tournament. But uh, the All Blues just have one or two players that look like they have that breakout speed that can just turn a game on its head, where the Blue Bonnets just really seem like a solid outfit, but they just don't have that superstar in their team. Nice deep kick now goes back to the blue bonnets. Well fielded though by Apple White as she moves the ball back to the right. They kick it again. I don't know if that's going to be the best option for the being down 25 points, kicking the ball away. Let's see what they can do. They defend well though. Beautiful one-on-one -on -one tackle there from Jen Swenton. She gets up quickly on her opposite player. Now Azevedo, nice pass, moves it out to the right. Beautiful little distribution there from Ibrahim and ball goes down. Little mistake and that's like the first time we've really seen a mistake from this all blue side and it's come halfway through the second half here. Dan, you mentioned Jen Swenton just so far, the class of their defensive structure coming up, putting a lot of good pressure on the Berkeley All Blues. When they do make mistakes, it's sort of on the back heels of her efforts. Uh, former Sevens, uh, Western Territory All-Star player. Yeah, they do have some classy players. And now they have the ball in hand. They're moving it out to the right. Nice little dummy there, and she straightens up. That's Murrell. Good little run from her. Referee Ricardo again. He's got for a high tackle. Just an indication of how good that step was from Murrell. Called the defender unawares. Nice little run there. That's Tony Lloyd. She straightens thing up. She looks like she could be a handful. Lloyd. And now they move it out to the left. One on one. Can she get around? She does. But beautiful scrambling defense from Berkeley. They come across. Referee says play on. Still with the blue bonnets. Just five meters out from the line. Let's see what they can do. Good scrambling from Berkeley, though. Now there's an opportunity to the right if they can move the ball. One more pass, and they'll get there. She throws a dummy and drops her head. Can she power over? She's right near the post. We're waiting for a call. It's play on. Oh, she must be just inches from the line here. And the referee will blow things up. Too many bodies on the ground. And we're going to pack a scrum. It's still going to stay with the blue bonnet. So they're finally getting some territory to go with the possession. And they do look threatening, Katie. Certainly. I think... Um Blue Bonnets just backed themselves going forward. Swenton maybe could have had one more offload pass. Would have been an, possibly an opportunity to dot it down. Um, but went for it, and Berkeley did well to hold it up. Yeah, good scrambling defense. Definitely, I thought, uh, I think we had Tedrick out here on the wing. If you gave her the ball, she was a chance to get around and dot down in the corner. But nonetheless, they still had the ball five meters out from the line. That's a better scrum from the Blue Bonnets. Getting aggressive there, pushing it back. But the ball comes loose, and we'll play another little knock on. Finally seeing a little bit of pressure. I'm sure the coaching staff from Berkeley are enjoying this comfortable lead here. They want to see how their team handles this pressure, defending their line, because they're gonna, these girls are going to be under some pressure later in the tournament, definitely tomorrow in the final stages, which we anticipate they will make getting through pool play. 
And uh, it's always good to see how your Chargers handle these pressure situations. You see a differential here in the blue bonnets, just kind of seeing that tri-line fever, putting a lot more pressure here in this scrum. Good defense, though, from Berkeley. Comes down. That's better work. She's going to dot it down, showing a nice thing. A clean set of heels is Savannah Campbell as she runs around the outside. And finally, pressure turning into diamonds here for the Blue Bonnets. And Berkeley defended well but couldn't hold them out long enough. They dot down for their first try. Takes the score to 27 points to 5 here. And we're in the second half of our first pool game in the women's bracket of the National Sevens Championship. For those of you joining, you, uh, joining us, I'm Dan Power, joined by Katie Worse up here in the commentary box. And we have an absolute sensational day of action coming to you from the Starfire Sports Stadium in beautiful Seattle. And the referee's whistle blows. Katie, that's the end of the game. 27 points to 5, Berkeley over the Blue Bonnets. Yes, Dan, Blue Bonnets have to be pretty comfortable with that result in the last minutes, seeing some great leadership and skills from Captain Savannah Campbell. There'll be much to see for the rest of the match here from both sides. Yeah, definitely a good start to action here. We get to see uh, what we will think is going to be one of the powerhouses here. Berkeley taking on the Blue Bonnets and comfortable winners. Berkeley, we move our attention now to the second women's game. We have Philly Rugby versus the Chicago Lions. Now, the Chicago Lions, well-known rugby program uh, up in the, the beautiful windy, uh, windy City. That is the Windy City in Chicago. Now, what can you tell us about them, the Chicago Lions, the women's outfit? Certain that the Chicago Lions number of players come from the Chicago North Shore outfit, which is the um, second place team from the 15s championship. So probably interested in avenging that close contest as well. Um, they played against the perennial powerhouse Orsu team, which is also here in the sevens. So a great deal of overlap in the different codes of the game. So we've, we're in for a treat for this match coming up. Oh, yeah. Up. And then Philadelphia, what can you tell